Okay, let's get on to 26th February morning shift paper. J mains 2021. Organic chemistry only. And uh, let's see this question. Chloroform and aniline is separated by simple distillation. Mm -hmm. When we separate water and aniline by steam distillation, okay, aniline boils below its boiling point. Well, three things here, chloroform, chloroform, water, aniline. How about the boiling points? Chloroform, CCL, CHCl3, water is H2O, Aniline is uh, this thing. So first of all, we need to have a good enough idea of the, the boiling points of these compounds. Chloroform, as you might have uh, um, <laughs> seen in uh, movies, uh, when it was used, chloroform was used to make people unconscious. So if you like in Hindi movies, in Bollywood movies, I have seen sometimes people using uh, um, a handkerchief and uh, chloroform in it and they put it on the nose of uh, the person and then that person goes unconscious. So chloroform is used uh, like that. So you can understand if this is happening, the chloroform molecules must be good enough volatile so that they can easily get into the uh, air which uh, one is breathing it should be volatile right it's like a perfume <laughs> yeah so chloroform they, and you can also understand there is no hydrogen bonding in the chloroform molecule uh, that's why it should have a lower boiling point than water so i don't know the exact value i think water we all know 100 degrees celsius for chloroform i would like to go with uh, just the ballpark guess 45 degrees celsius I feel maybe a little bit more but anyways aniline aniline as you see aniline it has a big benzene ring and hydrogen bonding also so do not underestimate van der Waal forces when the size of molecule is so large so I would like to go with uh, 140 degrees Celsius or yeah let's say J just uh, guessing these values but I know one thing is very clear that uh, aniline should boil higher than water and chloroform lower than water so chloroform and aniline is separated by simple distillation good enough uh, kind of a difference in their boiling points estimated boiling points <laughs> and uh, statement one is correct and statement two has nothing to do with statement one so it's about uh, whether both are true or false when we separate water by an aniline by steam distillation and what is steam distillation this is very interesting steam distillation uh, is a very uh, powerful technique it's a very nice technique to uh, distill in distillation it, it happens like uh, when uh, you are extracting certain oils you can use steam distillation what happens when when we are separating a, a mixture of two liquids uh, through distillation so the flow becomes stagnant here because uh, of a layer of vapors being formed here and uh, you need to make it moving you need to make it moving so if you are uh, steam distillate uh, using steam distillation with aniline and water what will happen that water is let's say 100 degrees C and aniline is 140 degrees C and then they are evaporating and aniline a layer of vapor is being formed here so the flow becomes stagnant here if you can boil the water if you can boil the water easily uh, at 100 degrees celsius then the this uh, here will be at the surface there will be more uh, motion because uh, water will will start to boil right and uh, if you boil the water like that and uh, you create steam then it will make uh, the other vapor also more volatile right so suppose these are uh, aniline vapors and they have uh, they do have certain attraction with water molecules also so they will get pushed away very easy easily so their boiling also will uh, happen um, at a, at a temperature lower than what you would expect them to happen because there is a push from the other vapor which is making the aniline molecules 
move faster away from there so this is a kind of a um, facilitation of vapor formation using steam so you make this layer more mobile and you can reach the distillation you can do the distillation faster so i think both of the options are correct when we separate water and aniline by steam distillation aniline boils below its boiling point yeah it's a high boiling liquid and it will boil faster because you are taking help from water vapor now let's come to the second one here what do we have ortho nitrophenol has intramolecular H bonding ortho yeah of course ortho nitrophenol so you have uh, nitrophenol your phenol and uh, yes so I can see hydrogen bonding yes so this is correct ortho nitrophenol has intramolecular H bonding and has high melting point due to H bonding okay if it has internal H bonding it will not uh, contribute in the melting point or boiling point and also here, here they use melting point in boiling point also if they have said boiling point the boiling point increases because different molecules get connected right if intermolecular forces become strong then boiling point will be higher it will be difficult to make the make these molecules go away from each other and uh, so as you can say the melting point will also be, no you can't say like that the melting point no no so anyways uh, this intra molecular H bonding it increases the stability of the molecule because in this molecule now we have one more kind of a partial bond and therefore it's uh, more stable than uh, without this bond formation right so intramolecular H bonding increases the stability of the molecule no, it doesn't affect the melting or boiling point of uh, the molecule so statement 2 is wrong statement 1 is correct statement 1 is true statement 2 is false this one let's move on to give the major product of the following reaction okay so you have uh, first you have this thing and then you use NaNH2 and you heat NaNH2 so NaNH2 you have NH2 minus amide ion which is a very good base so it can take up a, a hydrogen and there is bromine also so if you think of a, a very good a basic nucleophile and an alkyl halide it's not an alkyl halide it's a vinyl halide and uh, the bond here seems to be stronger but still there is a we use a very good enough uh, base and uh, you can see there will be elimination very easily you can understand that there will be elimination and you will get this the br will remove and this hydrogen will get removed and you'll get this thing and then <laughs> red hot iron tube once again red hot iron tube so this is being asked again and again in j mains this acetylene if you use uh, the same conditions red hot iron tube so what you get that these uh, they connect together and you see that this is C2H2 so three of them can cyclically polymerize and uh, you can get uh, benzene so this time you don't have an acetylene molecule you have just one more CH3 here so if three molecules of these connect then you will obviously get this right three CH3 groups alternate you can connect them you can um, draw the molecules like this uh, one after another three molecules here 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 and you join them cyclically polymerize them you will definitely get this thing mm. then the next one this time you have uh, bromination bromination and this is uh, this will be a free radical bromination because you have light and you don't have a uh, those things like uh, any catalyst FeBr3 or anything like that so then you have a bromine free radical let's try to make the bonds and then if you have the bromine free radical from where and you have hydrogen also here I see it because they have given this option what is this for so I, maybe this hydrogen gets abstracted 
okay and here you see that this hydrogen is getting abstracted so and this hydrogen and here from here you can also think this hydrogen getting abstracted and how about the last one this hydrogen also getting abstracted and the cn is always there yeah so you have to think whether uh, which of the hydrogen will be abstracted by the bromine so where would you get the best free radical if you abstract this benzyl carbon of course uh, you must know that this is the carbon where the carbon ion carbocation and the free radical also is quite stable so here if you go for this free radical this is a good free radical and uh, I think at the first sight two should be the answer I am just thinking of if phenyl free radicals they they are not that great because I can't see of uh, any stabilization so yeah I would like to go with the second option here yeah. now let's move on to the next one neoprene what is neoprene uh, mm, neoprene is a uh, synthetic rubber so if you study about rubber in uh, polymers chapter you have uh, you have natural rubber and uh, synthetic rubber and natural rubber is uh, it's made of, of uh, isoprene isoprene is basically butadiene with uh, a methyl group here and synthetic rubber which is neoprene one of the synthetic rubbers neoprene is uh, replaced by from here if you have methyl group but now here you have a chlorine group so it's more polar bond this bond is more polar and uh, you will expect more forces intermolecular forces in synthetic rubber a better rubber than natural rubber so natural rubber then you can polymerize in two ways cis or trans so the cis one is uh, the natural rubber and the trans one is gutta percha my yeah gutta percha and one of them is gutta percha and one of them is uh, the natural rubber and uh, this one this yeah pretty sure chloroprene chloroprene rubber go with this and uh, no other options with chlorine no yeah okay now let's move on to the next one what will be the major product in the given reaction sequence in so phenol and then you use this is Riemer timers timons reaction you you'll get a salicyl salicylaldehyde this one or this one the para product will not be favored because of intramolecular edge bonding as one can see and uh, br to cs2 this is uh, cs2 is a non-polar solvent so not too much bromination you will have to go with and there is no intramolecular edge bonding now so you will go with the para product here right uh, this question is about ortho para sometimes like most of the times we go with para product but sometimes when there is uh, like in this case salicylaldehyde and in cold base reaction also cold base uh, um, in in the reaction when we use uh, carbon dioxide as an electrophile so there again you get salicylic acid which is uh, an ortho substituted product so these two reactions in a coal base reaction and a Riemer Timon reaction we go with uh, the ortho product right because of H bonding I guess and then uh, we have is this the last one yes this is the last one and uh, a hydrolysis B okay interesting if it's a hydrolysis then the Cl2 well we'll see B forms oxime with NH2OH but does not give tolerance test compound A and B are let's start with the first one 2,2-dichlorobutane If we do a hydrolysis and uh, yeah, water can attack at this carbon and chlorine can leave and then H hydrogen can also leave so you can have OH and then 2OH here 
and then you can have uh, this thing okay nice good enough interesting so this is now the aldehyde uh, the ketone and then we with NH2OH we will get an oxide so the nitrogen with the lone pair will attack here and then N side dehydration will occur so if I so first attack here and NH2 plus OH then H plus transfer from here to there and then dehydration this OH and this H will get removed it's a, a pretty simple kind of uh, reaction with many um, ammonia derivatives uh, these uh, what do you call aldehydes and ketones react in this way so this is your oxime okay so B forms oxime but does not give it can form oxime okay so B forms oxime which means it has a carbonyl group and uh, it does not give tolerance test which means that it is a ketone okay so this should be a ketone and the first option seems like correct very nice how about the second one what is wrong with the second one 2,2-dichlorobutane okay it's the same thing but you wouldn't get 2-butanol yeah 2-butanol <laughs> there is nothing like 2-butanol because if it's butanol then it should be at 1 1,1-dichlorobutane and then 2-butanol no if it's 1,1-dichlorobutane then uh, you will get an aldehyde here after hydrolysis so 2-butanol there's nothing like 2-butanol 1,2-dichlorobutane 1,2-dichlorobutane on hydrolysis will give you um, a vicinal diol which will which is not unstable and uh, which will not be converted into a, any aldehyde or ketone so this is wrong yes first one is the correct one guys this is the correct answer oh this was very easy thank you for watching